Hey everybody, welcome back. Sam Terrell, the Northwest Aeronaut, and uh, happy holidays. It's the day after Christmas, and it's a nice cloudy day here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, no rain though today, so that's good. It's been uh, really rainy and, and low IFR conditions this past week, so. Today's kind of one of the first days that was uh, actually flyable. Uh, so we're going to be talking about engine out scenarios today, or engine out procedures, okay? Uh, we're going to be talking about the ABCs of your engine out procedures. Now most of you probably heard of the ABCs of your engine out uh, procedures. I have a little bit of a different take on them, not, not too different. And there's a couple different uh, interpretations out there of your ABCs, but I go all the way from A to G. Now, keep in mind, the scenario we're talking about today is strictly an engine out scenario. In other words, your engine just stops working, okay? It just stops running. It is not talking about a catastrophic failure, if your engine blows up, if your engine's on fire, anything like that. That is not what we're talking about today. So these ABCs, while they might be used in conjunction with other types of emergencies and engine emergencies, uh, are strictly, uh, for our purposes today, we're just talking about, hey, our engine has stopped running. What are we going to do about it? All right, guys, so let's talk about the ABCs that we use. So first of all, our engine stops, all right? A, very first thing, our first priority, airspeed. We need to pitch and trim. Very important, pitch and trim for our best glide speed. In the RV here, our best glide is 63, so we're going to be using our electric trim to make sure we're trimmed for 63. In a Cessna, uh, 172, 150, anything like that, you're just going to go one, two, three, four, three to four whole turns of nose up trim, and that should get you pretty close to holding your best glide speed. But the last thing you want to be worrying about when you are in an engine out scenario is having to keep track of your airspeed. You want the airplane to be flying that on its own. All right, B, best place to land. Now, ideally, in the perfect situation, you've been keeping track of the places that are available to you uh, to land every five minutes or so. And if that's the case, you're just gonna turn directly towards that predetermined spot but if you don't know what the best place to land is in the moment, you're going to be looking for that. And you're going to be doing a turn. Don't just look out the direction that you can see out the front of the window. Because the place that might be best could be either right below you already or just behind you. So you want to make sure you kind of start a nice turn to get a 360 degree view of what's available to you. As soon as you've made the decision, that's where I'm gonna land, right there. Well, it doesn't matter if it's an airport or a field or otherwise. When you've made the decision, that's where I'm landing. Your first priority is to turn directly toward it and get up over the top of it. Do not stay away from the spot you are trying to land. I don't care how high you are. The higher the better. But your priority is to get over the top of that spot and then we are going to circle that spot, staying directly over it, with the goal and the intention of setting ourselves up on essentially what would be a downwind leg at traffic pattern altitude, at 1,000 AGL. Because from there, it's just a regular power off landing, which you should be proficient at. You should be practicing those power off landings on runways, uh, whether it's a power off 180, to a very you know specific spot or just a power off approach uh, from the downwind and just getting in it on the runway. But you should be able to put that airplane down where you want it to be from a downwind leg at 1000 AGL. So that's our goal. Get over the top of where we're gonna land, circle it and set ourselves up on a downwind leg at roughly traffic pattern altitude 1000 AGL. All right, C, checklist. Now, checklist is always time permitting. However, there is always a little acronym you could use because again, if your engine just stops, it doesn't blow up or anything like that, it just stops. 
it's going to be due to one of three reasons. And that's either going to be due to gas, your fuel, air, or spark. And that's the acronym you can use. G-A-S, gas. G is for gas. We're checking to make sure our fuel is on. Switching tanks if we have more than one tank. We're going to make sure our primers are in and locked. All right? And we're going to make sure our mixtures are rich. That's gas. Then air. Air is our throttle. And carburetor heat if you have a carbureted engine. In this RV, we don't have a carbureted engine. But we're going to open the throttle. We're going to turn on carburetor heat if applicable. And then S, spark. We're going to make sure that our magnetos are working. Uh, in this case, we have an electronic ignition in the RV, so we're just going to make sure that both our lanes A and B are on. So, at the very least, if you're not pulling out, a, if you don't have time to pull out a physical checklist, at the very least, you're going to check those three things. Gas, air, spark. G-A-S is your acronym. All right? From there, we get to D, ABC D, declare. We're going to declare on either 121.5, if we have no other frequency, or if we're already in contact with ATC on flight following or anything like that, we're going to talk to whoever we're talking to already. We're going to declare the emergency, let them know our position, let them know how many souls are on board, uh, and roughly, uh, or where we're doing, if we're landing in a field or, or otherwise, okay? And then uh, we're also going to declare the emergency by squawking 7700, right? 7700. Then E, letter E is ELT. Now, most airplanes not only are equipped with ELTs, because you're required to have an ELT, but most airplanes are equipped with a manual control for the ELT. And assuming your airplane is, you want to turn that ELT on. As we know, the ELT will go on automatically with a hard enough impact. But our goal is not to impact that hard. Our goal is not to impact hard at all. But we do still want to get help, and we do still want to be found. So we're going to turn on that ELT manually so it's already on and ready to go. Finally, F. F is our forced landing procedures. That would be securing the engine, making sure the mixture and fuel are off, the magnetos are off, the master switch is off. Uh, in different planes, not in the, in the RV, but in Cessnas uh, or Pipers, you might unlatch the door and open the door so it doesn't get jammed shut if you do have a hard impact. And just anything else that's on your forced landing procedure checklist, okay? And then finally, G. G is get it on the ground. You've done everything you can do. Now your only job is to safely get that plane on the ground in the place that you've determined that you're going to be landing. All right? So uh, just going to do one more quick clearing turn here. We'll make la one last call, and we're going to simulate our engine failure and do our engine out procedure. Okay, I'm clearing the area here. I don't see anybody around. So we're going to go ahead and kill our engine now and pretend that we just lost it. Okay, here we go. Pulling our power back to idle. Oh, my engine just cut back. I just lost power. All right, first and foremost, A, pitching and trimming for our airspeed. 63 in the RV. 63 is what we're going for. And I'm just holding this back this nose up trim button down. That's all I'm doing. I'm holding it down. There's 63 and making sure that it's holding that nicely. Okay, B, best place to land. I am very fortunate right now. I have tons of fields. I'm going to give myself a quick turn just to see where the best field is. That's right. The very first place you should be looking is right below you. Because remember, our goal is to get over the top of where we want to land. And if you're already over the top of a great viable option, there's no need to go anywhere else. All right, I've got a field off my left here picked out. It's a nice big green one. And it is also allowing, it's going to allow me to land more or less into the wind. And that's something important too. You need to know where the wind is coming from so that you can try to land into the wind so your ground speed will be as slow as possible. So I am turning towards this field right now and I'm going to get up over the top of it and I am not going to take my eyes off of it. The minute you take your eyes off the field that you choose or whatever landing spot you chose is the minute you lose track of it. All right? All right, C. Uh, I don't really have much time to run a checklist, but I'm going to check my gas. So gas, my fuel is on, my fuel pumps are on. That's looking good. 
uh, air. My throttle, I would open it. I'm not going to do that right now, but I'd open it. And uh, that's really all I can do for air in this plane. And then uh, S, spark. My lanes are on. Uh, that's really all I can do in this plane, but in other planes, I might be checking my magnetos. Okay. And nothing's working. My engine's still not coming to life. All right, moving on. D, declare 121.5. I can just hold this down in the uh, G GTN 650 to put it in there, and I would squawk 7700. Make a call, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. RV 317 Victor Alpha is uh, near the town of St. Paul. Engine out, landing in a field, one soul on board. Please send help, all right? Now, D, or uh, sorry, E, ELT, I'm gonna turn my ELT on. That's on. F, forced landing procedures. I'm gonna turn my fuel off, my fuel pumps off. I'm gonna leave my lanes on for the moment uh, and my master on for the moment uh, so that I still have all my information, but I'm gonna turn it off before I get uh, on the ground and after I put my flaps down. I'm still right over my field at about 1,900 feet. So about one more turn here will put me on a nice downwind. All right, so now we're at G, and G is just getting it on the ground. So that's what I'm focused on. That's what I'm worried about right now. My field is right underneath me, and I am not leaving it. Remember, for the check ride, you should always choose a field. I don't care if there's an airport right right under you when you get this engine out scenario. Because if you choose an airport on your check ride to do an engine out scenario to, guess what? The examiner's gonna make you land at that airport. And then if you don't make it, well, sorry, check ride's over. But if you choose a field, you're obviously not gonna land in a field. So you just have to look like you're gonna land in the field. That's all. Just look like it. Okay, I am basically on a downward leg. We just passed traffic pattern altitude. I'm coming around for a base final. I can start putting in some flaps, maybe just half flaps right now. The field, I'm gonna turn left base here. You're gonna see off my wing cam, the field right there. You can see all the puddles of the water in the brown field, and I'm just looking for that green field just beyond the puddle, where there, there's actually a big puddle in the uh, green field too. All right, so this looks pretty good. I think I'd make the field no problem. We just hit 500 AGL. I'm gonna go ahead and go around. Bring it in full power. Holding that stick forward, because I'm trimmed up. Remember, you trimmed up. I'm gonna take my flaps out, and I'm gonna put that trim back to where it needs to be for my climb. All right, guys, so that's all there is to it. But the biggest mistakes I see are people not getting over the top of their field and staying there right away. Um, and then people not trimming for their proper airspeed and then they get fast and then they just lose time and altitude. All right, so hey guys, I hope that was helpful for you. Please leave any questions down in the comments and uh, until next time, resume your own navigation. We'll see ya.